Hello everyone! Good morning! It's another day again! And of course, for today's special is... Uh, me and Angel, we cook the ma ma blanca, no, the... Uh, ano nga itawag ka, Jajel? Balenciana. That one, like a paella rice. We call it paella rice? I think so, yeah. Some pork, uh, everything here. It's, uh, it's actually, it's uh, kind of close to jambalaya. So, instead of chicken, we use the pork, meat and pork liver. So, we just... Uh, well, at the moment, we cover this uh, banana leaves. And the thing of this Balenciana, the sticky rice, is you must be always the stir every time, every time, because you don't want to be the, the rice going to be uh, get dark. Or... This is it. So today is July uh, enrollment. So I'm going to enroll July here in the Tigbawa National High School. Yeah, are you ready to be a high school? Oh, she's not. She's painting the back. Yes, we're going here and high school. Where's the entrance? Okay, let's go. We're here in National High School. <laughs> you don't know? No. <laughs> School health clinic. So this is the start of the processing step by step. So after in school, so they sending us here to take picture for July ID. We go here in RJ uh, Video Production Digital Photography. Yes, this is it. So Jila is ready to take her picture. Picture, picture. Let's go inside. <laughs> Let's go. Nata, you go there inside. Okay. Habit. Ko pa ko pa git. Eh, wala kay menor ka. Kundi ano? Papay ka. Mulbosan na ito. May pulbosan na gigya ka. Kasi sa may pulbosan gigya ka ramo. You always remember your signature. Because it is you gonna use that one forever. Your signature. Yes. Kah, dapat na mulbus ka, anay. Yeah. Well, everybody, I've been spending my day working on the boat, but we'll show those in separate videos. Then these, uh, very positive little project on the boat, and uh, gonna be right back with that in the morning. So let me show you what the boys are here working on. I've just left them to their own device today. They're doing this stonework. And so I've just left them, put it however they want. They kind of got the idea of what I liked over there on this other side. And uh, Mock Mock helped me place a bunch of it and Joel some before. So they knew exactly what I wanted to do. Man, it looks great too. I, this first I've seen it actually. It's looking great. They did all this here this morning too, and it's right straight through in the bridge. So they've done more than you can actually see. And they're knocking it out, man. I mean, I can't complain. It looks great. It does. Oh, Mel's bringing some more of the brown stones. Oh, you got your puma stone? That's nice putting the shower right there in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's low tide right now. 
Oh man, Gimbrus looks nice over there right now. The sun's hitting right on it. Look at that. You can see all on the shoreline, little cliffs and everything down through there. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Hello there, little chickadees. Oh. So which ones haven't hatched? Give it a little longer. Candle those three eggs. They got chick in them. Uh, there was some of them that I put in a day later, so that might be it. Well, say hello to the little Rhode Island Reds. Yeah, the little Rhode Island Reds. You're the lightest one to come out, huh? You're still kind of wet. You ain't been out very long. Yeah, the little Rhode Island Reds. What you think about it, cappers? These are the ones Cap and I set. But some of them still, we took them out a while back. Um, what, about a week ago, some of them didn't we, that didn't have uh, any chicks inside the eggs. So some of them must not have been fertile. It is going to be a hot one. Cap and I, we got up, come over early this morning, and uh, we put the boat out. We just came back up. It's on us maybe about 11 o'clock right now. We came back up here chilling, chilling, chilling. So, uh, the boys, they are on the stonework here. Let me show you the work going on here. So yesterday, they had done this area and all the way around the bridge and down through there. And now today, they're continuing on. knocking it out so they had to bring over stone first and get prepared to be able to do this so they worked on that for the first while and uh then some of that stone's dirty so we're pumping water out over here so the water hose that's on that pump they just brought it over here and used it to clean the stone they got them a sponge and a, a brush right there and all they give that stone a bath so uh they're knocking it on out it looks good i told them to get this screen right here and put them over where they got some shade i bought this at city hardware recently buy it by the meter i bought a nice long piece right here they can tie off wherever they're working and have some shade but the rain can still drip through it which is good because that tarp material when you put it up there it'll hold water get heavy and then it'll rip nice oh that sand is hot and then we're no slippers out here oh, 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 oh. Ooh. that sand was hot <laughs> holy cow so where where we have a really high tide early every morning right now and it lasts for a while so it gives me time I can take the boat out at the beginning of the rising tide when it's up high enough here that I can launch go out for a while and I need to have time to be able to get it back in before it goes to a super low tide and then if, if it's really low tide and I can't get the boat in and uh, a storm comes this has got some sandbars out here that really churn up a surf and uh, oh man, you'd, you'd be stuck out there with the boat or you'd have to head to the city and up the river. So, uh, and that would still be a rough ride because you'd be going in a big surf. So uh, for right now, this stormy time of year where it just changes in a heartbeat, you see it's dark back over me here right now. 
you don't want to get too far out unless like say unless you know that there's a safe harbor nearby and there's not actually any safe harbor here anywhere nearby so it's kind of limited in the time frame that you can use the boat here right now if you're wondering how this truck does on pulling this boat up it does great it does really great Easy peasy. Coffee time. How was that chicken? That chicken was good. Man, and dog smokes. Mmm, larrap and terrapin. That's right. OJB would laugh to hear that. <laughs> larrap and terrapin. So, uh, Melinda cooked us and dog's chicken. <laughs> she cooked it with some pesos. Yeah, I like it. Good job. <laughs> like them camos, boy. My little militant girl. So, let's look at what's happening with the the boys. Melinda gathered up more stone here for me to rob again. <laughs> they went right underneath that. <clears throat> excuse me, there. I went right underneath that bridge yesterday. You can see it all here and all back underneath there. Really good. It is hot, hot, hot. Whew. Earlier, Cap and I, we were sitting in the living room, just chilling like a villain, watching a little TV and mailing on, uh, Actually, Mel wasn't there at the moment, and somebody was at the door, or g and told me there was a guest outside, and it was this guy that I had met way back when the world issue was going on, and everybody had to wear the order oh, first and on, and I had apparently met him back at um, a a hospital getting one of those tests done that you had to have you know going in and going out and all that and at first I was trying to remember because it's been a while and he said I met him there in the hospital and then I kind of I don't remember meeting anybody like right inside the hospital I had things second then when he finally mentioned that he met me uh, we were out in the parking lot then I remember down there in Smallville at Medicus across from Spring Palace, there's a parking lot there, and it was parked, and we were both walking out to our vehicles, and uh, and we got to talking right there, and it all came clear to me, and I remembered him then, and uh visited with him and his wife here, and Melinda showed back up, and we all sat and chewed the fat for a while, talked about life, talked about the Philippines, talked about, you know, trying to overcome um, frustrations and anger sometimes, and learning to chill out, and don't get so worked up about stuff. We've been robbing rocks out of this planters that I built before. Mel had initially covered them completely in rocks, but she's come around to the same thing as me now. I put them in as planters, hoping we could grow stuff in them, and now that's what she wants again. And so she's got some young okra growing here right now. She's going to keep her little plants like this and keep rocks around them, but she's going to add vegetables in. She's got her some okra growing here right now, which is really cool. And she's cleaning out these rocks here right now. And so are Joel and I also getting all the small ones. Oh, my God. You see that where that bamboo is at there? And this one, it was just full of stones down inside. I was reaching down there and getting them, but I was kind of scared, thinking, what if something else crawled in this hole, too? <laughs> so I was, I was putting my hand in there and out like lightning fast. <laughs> Yeah, this one, I got a bunch of uh, rocks out of the bottom of it. So anyway, look here. She's got some more okra growing right here, see? And right here. And over here, she's been composting this up. Yeah. And she's got um, uh, another papaya growing here. There's more okra back there again. Then okra here. And this is what? You got one, two, three, four okras. And this is that climbing spinach right here. Yeah. 
Now that's just little uh, decorative plants, but check out these papayas. She's, they just love it right here, man. I don't know what happened. We get a big typhoon in the salty air. We'll have to my, see. That's why I'm concerned. That's why I always have, uh, think I had in backup. That's why like there, you know, I plant more several papaya there. You know, like growing like this already. Anybody notice anything different about Melinda lately? Uh, write it in the comments below if you notice something different about her that we hadn't talked about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you notice it, comment down below and then look at this beautiful papaya here growing too this is starting blooming now and then right here she planted in this is the um sweet yeah leaves. sweet potato leaves right here you can cook the the leaves uh, for everything yeah they so not only you know you can grow sweet potato but you can, you harvest the leaves the stems you can eat it all so she's got more of them that she's been sticking in right here and of course she's got lemongrass and i i just tell you man, i was talking to cap about it earlier I don't know if this, if that sandy stuff back there would hold it or not, but I wish we had lemongrass growing all the way down that back side. No, it's not. It, uh, it won't. Le we'd have to add a little bit of uh, yeah, topsoil in with it, right? That's why, uh, you know, I all the grass that I know I threw it there though. You Getting know? a little compost yes, back there. Yeah. Yeah. But it that but that one there that you refill it is a uh, sand that from the salt is a bit salty. This um, it's lemongrass deters mosquitoes yes that's what that's what uh that's the reason that i planted one there you know i some of the area i plant the, i make or uh, put random the uh, lemongrass is that's my purpose is the oh. uh, natural repellent for the mosquitoes and this one is uh, maybe you're gonna mistaken so this one is the lemongrass and this one is citronella citronella it, yeah it is really yeah 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 the mosquitoes. yeah yeah absolutely Atelier gave me this one oh that's know, so cool it's the only one survived wow yeah so our neighbors right here they got some bayacubos there and they're not really ever there they just just like this a weekend little small beach house for them they live up in the city and it's so dark on the other side of that fence there and down in there and those bayacubos mosquitoes really love it over yes. there and i i keep mixing spray up my sprayer and spraying all over in that area but um i thought man if we had lemongrass down there it'd be nice anyway we continue here she's got another papaya growing here and she had one here that was so beautiful what'd you do with it is that the one down there at the end now did you move it yeah and it is it is not good at one there because it is really too wet you know it's, so it's where is it now huh? where is it i move it is i move i you know is I that it yeah not that one i moved somewhere like, oh you think it'll survive i don't know but it don't matter There's boy it so sure wet. was growing good there though yeah but it's struggling i, I saw the roots it's it is getting too wet. wet yes yeah i see so i i have a uh, uh, Anyway, I oh, so you put the um, taro, taro right there. Love the, it loves the really yeah, wet. And it yeah, really spread and it'll more. absorb that up, yeah. and it'll spread more roots exactly. underneath. It's yeah, that's the Oh, that's cool. So that's what's happening here. Let's walk out here and look at the project on the stone. They are moving on down through there on it. So Mel and I, we always love growing vegetables and stuff. But, of course, she wanted to make this place pretty, and she loves her plants. And she kind of really, I'm not punking her out here, okay? This is just real talk. We're husband and wife. We're not sensitive with each other. <laughs> like, some some commenters think we're so sensitive with each other, or like, I'm really shaming Melinda. But I pointed out to her, I said, you know, babe, the plants are beautiful. Now, don't get me wrong, I love the plants, and I'm a plant person. But... I really believe, even though I've been doing the carnivore diet, I still eat some vegetables as well. So I'm not strict carnivore. But, you know, things, I'm always a survivalist. I'm always, you know, semi-prepper. I'm not like a diehard prepper. But let's just say I'm a, you know, uh, always plan ahead, always plan ahead. That was instilled by me, my grandparents stuff. You know, they lived through World War One, World War Two, and all, and Vietnam War. they seen all the wars, you know. And, um... They're always prepared, prepared. They live through the Great Depression and everything. So it was always be prepared, be prepared. Always have something growing. Always have seeds stored, seeds saved, you know. Don't get down to where you uh, are saying, I don't have a peso. No peso left to buy any seeds. <laughs> we keep seeds backed up. And Mel, she takes anything that we harvest or she harvests, she takes 
and throws those seeds over into some places where she's got a lot of compost. And it's just like, wait and see what sprouts out, right? Yes. Yeah. And all of this different stuff sprouts. And then she takes it and transplants it to where she wants it. And, I mean, it's a mashup of what's going to grow in there, what kind of peppers, what kind of tomatoes, yes. whatever it whatever is. Whatever you buy in the market that, uh, you know, the scratch and the home, uh, you're going to throw in the compost, it's going to be grow. Yeah. Are you surprised what it is there? Yeah, so when she cleans it out, cleans the vegetable, you know, slice that big squash open, whatever. Um, she'll take, sometimes she'll actually dry and store some seeds sometimes, but a lot of times she'll just go put them in the compost and then let those sprout out. And then we, me too, I help sometimes to transfer and put them in different spots. And so I asked her, you know, let's go from just being ornamental plants so much now, let's get back to something that can actually be, um, you know, devoured if we need to, you know, a, a, a resource. And it don't only help us, it helps her family because we share it out. And I noticed she didn't, hesitate on that she really did get right back on it hey Mel did you see the banana came back I cannot believe this banana has came back up it struggled so hard here yeah. during that dry season I believe that one because you know once when the uh, rains hit it's, uh, the roots was already down anyway yeah it, well I'll be darned I probably will have to move this though hey what kind of tree is this right here Mel it is a sour soup we're gonna to have to find a place to move it for you because yeah. we're gonna be I building here. Yeah, I mean, we don't have to move it immediately, but eventually. So, over here, we move some things around here and there and, and plant. We got some, uh, well, we had, it, well, it's still trying to grow here. I see something's been eating on it, though. Um, there's cucumbers or squash and stuff growing out in some places around here, just random. We got some young papayas planted around the edge right here. Uh, there's another little squash starting here right now. I planted some seeds up here and I don't know if they're ever going to sprout or not. I'm just going to check here and see. I don't see them sprouting yet where these stobs here are at. Uh, still don't see them sprouting. But it hasn't been that long. So it might need a few more days before they sprout. Lots of lemongrass here. Lots of lemongrass. Right here, all day, every day, mixing. <laughs> this is my concrete mixer right here, man. All day, every day. Same task, right? <laughs> every week. <laughs> every week, every month. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. So let's go out here. Um, when I was at the grand opening for the Canadian Beaver with old Michael from that Philippine Life, um, one of our shared viewers commented, he don't know why I stuck these sidewalks up so high, but um, I told him it's because it's getting all backfilled. We just hadn't got it backfilled yet, and you won't see these pipes anymore or anything. Um, it all has its time and place that it'll get done. And this will get filled with compost and topsoils because it'll have landscaping all side of it. And we've already backfilled this quite a bit. It's settled down some, and we'll top it off with more now in the same way over there. So when it's done, they're just going to be normal sticking up just a little bit like normal sidewalk does it's always about trying to get it higher here so just look at this stone work here oh Mel's bringing them a basket of stone under the under the bridge let me try to hold this steady so they went from the other side of that blue pipe yesterday under the bridge and they got down to about that big stone and today they've worked all down through here down through here, down through here, down through here, and this is where they're at right now. Oh, 
Boy, they got it knocked out down through that. Looks so good. There's going to be some point that we're going to uh, briefly go back to Tejas. And, and I mean very briefly, even more brief than the last time. I'm not exactly, exactly sure when, but what I'm doing is I'm getting materials ready and for several other projects. And, of course, I, I respect my guys' livelihoods and taking care of their families. Mop mop has got a baby. You know all that so what I'm gonna do is have them work to do while I'm gone um, and so we're getting material stacked for that and so when that time comes they know what to do um, and G Lai and um, Miller one of Melinda's brothers was one of the Tenoids here uh, or was I, th I think he resigned from it now uh, his wife that works for us here, uh, the other brother I was just talking to, the twins' dad, he's the security guard. He'll be over here on his days off. He, you know, at security guards, kind of like a fireman back in the West, you know, where you're on, you know, a long string of hours, then you're off for a few days. So uh, that's kind of the way his security guard schedule is. So he'll be over here, mock mock be over here so the house will never be sitting empty there'll be somebody here 24 hours a day so uh, we don't have to worry about security anything like that it's just going to kind of carry on and just have all the materials here for them uh, we're not going to do the pool thing or the rooms over the pool until we finish our trip back to texas i don't want to be interrupted in that and i'm trying to get past this rainiest part of rainy season which is usually June, July, August. Now, then September, October, November, it starts improving. You still can get a bad storm. You still get a lot of rain, but it's not, it starts spreading out not as frequent. Well, I'm gonna go back up there to my boat right now. I've got some things I wanna do to it before morning because I'm gonna put the boat right back out early in the morning. It's like, let me give you a little idea. I, this tide tables, I kind of get them memorized the best that I can with what's going on with the moon, and you kind of start seeing a pattern. When you live here long enough, it's like them boys, they pretty much have the pattern memorized. Never thought in my life I'd be uh, living where I'm actually memorizing tide patterns, you know. He's fishing. He's got a few. And these are tasty little fish here, too, man. They're good. And he's pulling line. Let's see. And there's a little wooden fish out there let me see if i can zoom up on it we're gonna find it here there it is right there in the middle of the screen that's a little wooden fish and it's kind of curved shape and he's pulling that from the shore of the string and it's curved so that it always pulls itself out away from me and on the bottom of that there's a string of hooks several strings of hooks usually and they're little small hooks kind of like crappie hooks and he's pulling that, and you can actually pull that in and have several fish on hook all at one time, just about like doing a crappie rig. And you get those little fish, see him just pulling it out there. Here, I'll back up a little bit and see if we can keep it in focus, see? And then I'm gonna back up even more. And so he's, he's way down there now, and it's right back here. It's here in front of me right now, let me show you right here and he pulls that along the shore and he'll pull it in and he may have numerous or he might have one or he may have none of those little small fish on there but that's like kind of like a little flat plank and and it's got a carved out wooden fish with a curve in the body kind of like me curving my hand and then it's always as he pulls it always wants to pull out away from him right out there pretty cool huh